Hello class, this is Professor Luke and welcome to week two of social media. Hope the first week treated you well. Um, getting all your accounts squared away and creating accounts where you didn't have on the requested platforms. Um, this week we're going to dive into social media as a medium a little bit more. And instead of rehashing what you've already read um, in the book and on uh, the articles, I wanted to share an article and discuss an article that I found. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is actually something from a study from uh, S Simon Fraser University in Canada. The article is called Social Media, Getting Serious, Understanding the Functional Building Blocks of Social Media. And is this an authority? May, maybe, maybe not. But I like the way that they took the social media experience and broke it down to, into a framework or what they call a honeycomb of seven different aspects. Presence, sharing, relationships, identity, conversations, groups, and reputation. So let's cover each of these in a little bit of detail and see how they relate to you as a social media marketer um, if you were in that role, which is kind of the objective of this class. So first is identity. Now, when you think of your own identity, you, it includes all kinds of things, your name, your age, your gender, um, location, profession. But also, something that's a little bit more abstract is your uh, what you choose to disclose, especially on social media, where you like things, dislike things, give your thoughts, give your feelings. Um, so that's all part of makes up your social media identity. Another aspect of identity is uh, some people use their real names and some people use handles. For example, Twitter uh, allows you to make up completely random t Twitter handles. Whereas something like LinkedIn would be you are required to use your real name, obviously, because they have two completely different purposes. And um, in the aspect of that, with revealing personal information, there's always, as a marketer, need to be aware of uh, what information you're requesting, because as we all are concerned with security and identity theft, and we always hear about security breaches, that type of thing. What does that mean for us as a marketer? Um, what what information do we actually need and which information is not necessary um, when we're requesting information from a comp potential consumer, for example. The next is conversations. And really, when you think about social media, uh, we're about building relationships, which we'll cover in a second, and then conversations. Um, so example, when you tweet or you write a blog, even if you post something on Facebook, um, you're looking to make a conversation or to uh, make a connection with people um, as the second point says there meet new like-minded people find true love to build their self-esteem or to be on the cutting edge of a new idea or a trending topic so that conversation however um, well or an extension of that would be people that use social media for a um, political say environmental something cause basically causes that mean something to them and they're using that as a platform to share their thoughts. So what does that mean to you as a social media marketer or social media marketing department? Really what that means is um, you need to be aware of your uh, conversations about your company and your products, whether that be on your site or others. Um, is, a, is the impression negative, positive? How do you deal with things that aren't, aren't positive? For example, if someone's saying they hate your product on your um, Facebook page, what do you do with that? Um, how do you respond? Do you delete it? Do you respond to the person? Ask them to contact you, etc. So it's kind of a ongoing process there. The third is sharing. Now we all sh part of the conversation. For example, on Facebook, you you share content, um, whether it be pictures, whether it be poems. Um, you know the possibility is really endless. Now, something to think about with sharing is uh, what are people sharing? Is it appropriate? And then, for example, LinkedIn, you would share completely different content than you would with Facebook. Uh, one's for professional purposes and one's for personal purposes. So, um, again, from a marketing perspective, um, you want to look at it basically as what should be shared or what are you sharing and um, how far does that go? Uh, do you allow 
people on your social media site for your product to post images? Um, do you allow, you know, copying of your images, that type of thing? Or um, there's just a whole complex, uh, I guess I would say, cyclone of different aspects of sharing. Um, what do you want to share? What people are sharing about you? Um, it's all part of that image that you need to portray um, as a professional firm or a marketing company um, when, you're, when you're engaging in the social media marketplace. The next one is print presence, and this one's pretty easy. Um, it's where they are, simply. Um, if you think about it, something like Foursquare, uh, it's very dependent on the user's location. Um, but also, another aspect of that is availability. Um, for example, something that's real time versus uh, synchronous, or synchronous is real time versus asynchronous, which would be uh, not real time. So, for example, a chat, for example, or something of that nature would be, uh, you know, current time, where, for example, responding to a, a Facebook post, you might see the post and respond to it two days later, uh, that type of thing. So, as a marketer, you need to basically uh, use presence to pay attention to the importance of when the user is available and uh, where they're at, and basically custom your message, customize your messages towards that. Why are we on uh, Facebook? Why are we on LinkedIn? Uh, it's all about basically finding connections or building relationships. And that's done through some of those things we talked about, like the conversations and the sharing. Um, but when you look at a relationship, it's how we relate to someone else. Um, whether it be, for example, something formal like LinkedIn um, is kind of regulated, structured. Um, you're allowed to link to other people. Um, and basically see how far you are away from the person you want to be linked to. So for example, if I knew somebody who was an HR person in a company that I wanted to work for, and so I may, perhaps would send a connection request in LinkedIn to be able to you know, open a dialogue or something of that nature. And then with relationships, there's formal and informal. So for example, something like YouTube or a blog, people are consuming the information and it's kind of a one-sided relationship. Uh, something, however, like, well, Facebook, for an example, when you're, there's a conversation and uh, groups would be another way, which we're going to talk about in just a second. Um, LinkedIn, Facebook all have groups where you can find like-minded people and build relationships with them. So as a marketer, what groups or what areas of the social, social media paradigm are you trying to connect with people? Are you doing one-sided relationships like blogs and um, that type of thing? Or are you having a chat or uh, some type of back and forth dialogue on your Facebook, company Facebook page, something like that? And of course, the biggest, um, as we've all heard of companies that do unethical things and their relationships are tarnished permanently, Reputation. As a marketer, you need to so pay attention to the reputation of your, your firm and how it looks to others. Basically, um, from a marketing perspective, social media is kind of like, uh, what's the what's the adage I can't think of? Oh, lipstick on a pig. <laughs> I'm from Iowa, so I can say that one. But essentially what I'm saying is um, it's all about the way you look. and groups. So I kind of mentioned that just a second ago, but basically the groups are how you build community with your market, with your customers, with the people that use your social media outlets. Um, this is, can be everything from friends to followers. So I, m biggest thing I see this as is, like I said, you can have like-minded groups um, on p several of the platforms, or perhaps you have people um, like your page and subscribe to your page and uh, you have some type of, not allegiance, what's the word? Affiliation, there we go, um, to your product or to your, your company. Okay, so switch gears just a little bit for a sec couple seconds here. Um, these are also from that article, um, as is everything here. But um, looking at three of the different platforms and what they emphasize. You'll see with LinkedIn, what's it about? It's about connecting and sharing your identity. 
You also are building relationships and reputation. Sure, some of the white ones are involved, but really what that's the focus of LinkedIn. So we change that to Foursquare. You know, if you're not for Foursquare, you can basically uh, check into places like restaurants and shops or wherever and uh, post your opinions, that type of thing. So um, Foursquare is about location, so it's all about presence. You're about connecting with others and building relationships, and it's about identifying yourself because you're saying, hey, I'm here. That's giving, because uh, if you remember back to a, uh, identity, it's part of that is location, and part of that is um, an anonymity versus being forthcoming. So what, what's different on this one? Facebook? Facebook is about rebuilding relationships. It's all about presence, where, whether you're checking in or identity, saying who you are and building that, um, for example, what you like and what you don't like, sharing comments on Facebook. That also leads to conversations. And reputation. Uh, just a quick side story here because I'm running out of time. But um, there's been uh, studies done, or articles written at least, on uh, people that don't filter their Facebook page and don't have security settings and they've been offered a job and then uh, the potential company reviews their Facebook page and says see something that they think is object objectionable and basically rescind the offer so if you're job hunting you might want to sanitize your Facebook page for a few months okay finally last point um, the four C's that this article talks about cognize congruity, curate, and chase. So what do these mean? Cognize, basically um, recognizing and understanding the social media landscape. Um, where your platform or your company fits into those uh, seven categories. Congruity, a firm needs to develop strategies that are congruent with or suited to different social media functionalities and the goals of the firm. So this co com comes down to what platforms are you going to use as a company in a marketing department? Curate. Um, basically, as we've read about in your uh, readings for this week, curation of social media content versus development of content is basically uh, managing those social media interactions and the content that's there. Um, developing a clear understanding of how often the firm should chime into conversations. Like I said, if somebody's bad-mouthing your product on a Facebook page or something, do you as a company chime in? Um, or do you just let it naturally progress? And then finally, chase. This is the constant uh, chase of information about social media activity. You're, on, you're basically there to market your product or your service. So you're constantly scanning the environment and understanding what's working and what's not working. Um, companies actually have uh, social media marketing departments now, um, and that's what the people do all day. I think it would be a fun job, but you have to have a certain type of a degree, a marketing degree, which um, I don't have. I have a business degree and an IT degree. So Anyway, that was what I wanted to share this week. I'm sorry it went a little long, 13 and a half minutes, but let's have a good week and contact me if you need anything. Thank you.